Okay, as always, we're going to start off with Colossians 3 and 17. Giving all praise and glory to the Most High Power, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for all things. He was to be praised for everything. Colossians 3 17. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem Mashiach. I wish I give thanks to the Most High and the Father. By him. How we do that? By Hashem or Mashiach Gavashai in the name of the Lord and Savior. Because he said, No man come to the Father except from by him. St. John 14 and 6. And Ephesians 5 and 20 says, You give thanks to the Most High and the Father in the name of the Lord and Savior. By Hashem or Mashiach Gavashai. So that's why you hear me saying, In the name of the Lord and Savior. As I read Colossians 3 and 17. And that's the way we go to the Most High. We go to the Most High. And the most I can hear what we're going through as we ask him to send him forth his Holy Spirit to enlighten us with his word. That he had written by holy men that were moved by the spirit of the most high. So I wanted to share scripture in so I say a lot it can't, you know, a lot of people think that they they need to leave the Western Hemisphere or America and flee somewhere else, go somewhere else. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can't go nowhere when you're going to run from the sky. <laughs> if you can find somewhere you can run, and once you come out of a hole, I don't care how many miles down, you have dug yourself into the ground. When you come up out of that hole, it's going to be a sky above you. So if you can go somewhere where there's no sky, then yeah, you can run somewhere. You can't run nowhere you can run to hide from the most high. Believe this. Look at uh, Revelations 18 and 4. Revelations 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. That you don't be partakers of the filthy, wicked acts. Or let me rephrase that. The filthy, make nasty acts. Wicked acts that they're doing amongst you. So I say, come out of her, my people. That ye be not partakers of her sins. And that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And the Most High have remembered her iniquities. See? The Most High looking down. What's that long suffering? You see? So he looking down and he's seeing all the sins that's being done, especially here in America. He said, Remember, it says, For her sins have reached under heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. So this is only talking about. You transgressing the laws of the Most High. So sin is a transgression of the law. Whose law? The Most High's law. So look at uh, Ezra 6 and 21. The book of Ezra, the sixth chapter, and verse 21. Just give you an idea of how the Most High said we're not supposed to be involved in all the sinful acts that are being perpetrated on this earth at this time as an Israelite. So I said, come out of her. Don't be dealing with all the madness and the things that they present to you that sin. Well, you got to know. Right from all. There's no, be no excuse because I got to keep telling you, all of us that are Hebrew Israelites are going to be beat with more stripes than those that don't know. You can look down upon them all you want to, thinking you all that because you know a little something, something, till your knowledge puffers up. But the more you, the more you receive, the humble you have to become. Or the Most High gonna bring you down for your exaltation of yourself. Listen, and that's what this world perpetrates. I'm all this. I'm all that. I'm all this. Look at me. Take me out. I, 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 I. Me, 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 me. That's the pride that exists, especially here in America, especially on the superpowers of the earth. So you follow the same trend, 
You just like them. That's why I say, come out of them, my people. That you be part, not partakers of her sins. See, so she's sinning. You don't think there's not going to be a judgment. So look at 2nd Ezra. No, no, Ezra. Not 2nd Ezra, but Ezra, the 6th chapter, in the 21st verse. It says, And the children of Israel, which were come again out of captivity, come again out of captivity, and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen. You hear that? Let me read you again. And all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the most high power of Israel did he. What was it talking about? You see, they separate themselves from the filthiness of the heathen. That's what we have to do, like I'm telling you. That's the sins. Filthiness, filthy, make nasty. Sins. Sinning against the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His law, statute, commandments. But see, if you don't do the same thing as a heathen is doing, you filthy too. You ain't no different than a heathen. That's why I say Israel is a heathen too. Because you're caught up in the filthiness of the heathen, therefore you are the heathen. Along with the heathen. That's why you see Gentiles, Israel Gentiles, and the heathen are Gentiles. Same, same, most same. Old. All what the most I deal with, how you conduct yourself, how you act in the spirit. Say whatever, but your actions prove who you are and what you are and what you're gonna get in the end. Straight up. So when is this? Let's go back to verse 20. For the priests and the Levites were purified together, all of them were pure and killed the Passover. For all the children of the captivity, and for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. See? This is for the Passover. And the purge of me, captivity. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of captivity, and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen you know filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the most high power of Israel did he and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy for the most high had made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of the most high the power of Israel see the most high rules in the kingdom of men and set up over it whomsoever he will set up over it the basis of men now you look at that's why I say you look at these other nations when we're in captivity under them they show favor you look at go to uh, Ezra the first book of Ezra Start at verse 1. You'll see that what, let me read first, first before you go there, let me make sure that you understand how what's going to be said, what's being said is already written that we knew these things, certain things we knew as a people that's in the Bible that at this day and time we don't have a clue of because you're just going by whatever it is that primarily in your life as far as dealing with deep understandings of what's really happening of the past and the present and the future. Most of our people don't really care because you've been dumbed down. You've been made to not think. So I say, well, keep some of us where you put it in the book. This is the most important book you need to have in your life, the Bible. But you got to have it with understanding. It's very important. So you look at uh, Daniel 4 and 17, and say, this matter is by the decree or the watchers, Daniel's 4.17. It said, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. 
to the intent that the living, and we are the living, may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. See that? The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and set up it and giveth it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men. You understand? Proverbs 8, 15 and 16. Hold Ezra. We're coming back to Ezra, but Proverbs 8, 15 and 16. Proverbs 8, 15. By the kings, by the king's reign, and princes decree justice, by me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. You hear that? By the, by the king's reign, and princes decree justice, by me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. See, by the Most High. So when you go to Ezra, the first chapter, understand that the Most High rule in the kingdom of men. It says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Most High by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Most High stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, most high power of heaven have given me all the kingdoms of the earth. See that? He knew that the Most High had given him the power to be over all the kingdoms of the earth, as it is written. And he had charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So the Most High told him to build him a house in the land of Judah. In Israel, who is there among you of all his people, his power be with him, his power be with him. So you see, he let you know that the most high people are the children of Israel, he's saying his power be with him. Let you know that he know that the most high power who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Who is there among you, verse 3, of all his people, of all his people, of all the most highest people? Here's a personal, possessive pronoun showing ownership. His people, his power, most high, be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the most high power of Israel. He is the power. Which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of the Most High, that is in Jerusalem. See? Gold, silver, everything, beasts, everything that we needed. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin. Judah and Benjamin. And the priests, which are the Levites, and the Levites, with all of them, whose spirit the Most High had raised to go up to build the house of the Most High, which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold, with goods, and with beasts, and with precious things, beside all that was willingly offered. Also Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Most High, 
which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his God, gods. So, you know, when you understand the person me, they took down the Babylonian Empire. Nebuchadnezzar had taken all our vessels. Then you know it had to be precious. And he took all our vessels in, that was in the house of the Most High and put them in his God's houses. You see? So Cyrus took them out of Nebuchadnezzar, idols, gods, houses, to put them back where they belong, the house of the Most High. Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of Mithridat, the treasurer, and numbered them unto Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. So now he goes into number that, but I just want to show you how that's favor with us. Knowing that the most high is the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's our power, the Israelites, these are the things you're looking at these other nations did concerning having favor with the Most High. Why are they going to be able to be in, in the kingdom in their place working and serving the Most High while Mashiach of Ashai and the 12 tribes of Israel and learning the righteousness of the Most High which is his law, statute of commandments. That's what we see here. And but most will not even consider in this kingdom what works and what don't work with the most high because they don't believe in the most high. This what this kingdom, this you want to hear what this kingdom says? To give you an idea. The superpowers of the earth, these kingdoms now. Do what they say. If not, then find somewhere where you can justify what it is that they've done and what they're doing and what they will do. The scripture already declared it. Let's see. Job, go to Job, the 21st chapter. And let's read about it. Uh, Let's read verse 7. Job 21 7 says, Wherefore do the wicked live? Become old, yeah, are mighty in power. Now Job 9 24 says, The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not wearing who is it? So we know that the wicked, you know, he's covered the face all the way to cartoons. <laughs> You know, they'll start with the little children. They thinking that everybody in the Bible is Caucasian. Straight up. Jewish. Or some sort. You know? So, plus they in the Bibles they covered up the faces of the most high Mashiach El Shav shows you that in Bibles. Just open up your Bibles. Get a Bible. Open it up. Look at the pictures that's in the, in the Bibles. You'll see. So it says. Verse 13, it says, they spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. They spend their days in wealth. They have the money. I mean, how much money would you have if you had the benefit of someone working for you for over 400 years and you're reaping all the money from free labor? They spend their days in wealth and in a moment, go down to the grave. They die. Listen. Therefore, they say unto the Most High. Do what the wicked say unto the Most High. When you hear for best, they depart from us. For we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. You know what the wicked say? Therefore, 
They say unto the wolf, High, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. So when you follow the wicked, you follow the same spirit. You've been born into the same spirit how people have made you. I don't give a damn if it's your mama, your daddy, whoever. Whoever you was raised by, they had the same spirit. Unless they done really converted themselves to be born again to recognize how not to be wicked. Or not to, how to think like the wicked. How not to be brain polluted. It's so therefore they say unto the Most High, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. So what is the Almighty? What that we should serve him? What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? what they say. In the end, when salvation is coming, that's why I say you can't be all hyped up to think you somebody when you just like this. You following the same example as the wicked. You down with them. Wisdom of Solomon 5. This is when salvation is coming to the Israelites. This is what they're going to say. Wisdom Solomon 5 and 7, right to the point. We buried ourselves in a way of wickedness and destruction. That's what the wicked are going to say, because they rear themselves in a way of wickedness and destruction. They are as hell, the Bible said, wherever they go. In wickedness, are you that two-third bunch, or you that trying to be the one-third that's falling into the two-third bunch? You wicked too, of Israel. They rear themselves in a wickedness and destruction. So you got that same mindset, your brain been polluted, by the filthiness of the heathen as we just read in Ezra. You can't make it say nothing different. Right? So it says, we read ourselves in a way of wickedness and destruction. Yeah, we have gone through way through deserts, excuse me, where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Most High, as for the way of the Mashiach El Shai, we have not known it. There it is. That's for the way of the Most High, the way of the Mashiach Yavashai, they will say, we have not known it. Known is past tense, understand this. So that's from this time to the time that the Most High will bring salvation, powers and authority to the Israelites. To rule forever and ever and ever in a righteous world, they're going to be saying this. That's what they're saying. I mean, the Most High gave us many clues, many understandings of how it's going to go down. I'm going to go down. What they going to be doing? Look. In Revelations. Tells you how. In verse 12. Of the 11th chapter. Of Revelations, Revelation 11 and 12, it says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, the salvation to Israel. Say, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, in a chariot of the Most High. Listen, and their enemies beheld them. You hear that? The wicked gonna beheld us. They're gonna see us. As we going up, the chariots come down and get us, and we going up in there. And their enemies beheld them. See? You see what they're going to say. You heard what they're going to say. That's why you can't be over-righteous thinking you all that. And thinking that's, that's where pride comes in. And you're not humble before the Most High no more. Look at uh, Job 12 and 24. Job 12, 24. Well, he's going to break you down one way or another. All you that think you all that. You ain't got nothing. That's why the most I say here, the poor man that's prideful. You ain't got nothing to be prideful about. But yet still, you think you all that because you done memorized a few scriptures or you know you're an Israelite. You gotta humble yourself before the most high humble you. Listen, he take away the heart of the chief or the people of the earth. You hear that? He take away the mind of the chief or the people of the earth. 
and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. See? That's what they just said. We read ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. We've gone through deserts where there lay no way. That's the chiefest. The one in charge, you understand? He take them away the heart. That's the mind of the chief or the people of the earth. Take away their mind. And cause them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. You gonna tell the pocket we don't go along with this? Oh yes. It's all in the spirit of the most high. Oh yeah. Understand this. Understand this. This is the power of the most high. You think the most high I'm, what man gonna put this together like this? I don't think so. I don't understand how y'all could think. From Genesis to Revelation, man wrote the New Testament, this, that, and the third, whatever. I mean, that's crazy. Look at uh, Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Psalm 119. And look at verse 133. It says, Order my steps in thy word. See? It said, Order our steps in the word of the Most High. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. So let the filthy acts of the heathen which are full of iniquity sin have the meaning over me deliver me from the oppression of man so will I keep thy precepts thou have precepts understand this Bible make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes they said, what good is it for them to know the precepts of the Most High, to figure out this puzzle, or to hear enough to be able to learn the cheat? Other people say, you'll take their minds away from them. Go back to the Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 8. That's what they're going to say. Say, what has pride profited us? That's what it comes down to. Thinking they all that. Say, what has pride profited us? But what good have riches without vaunting brought us? And you got riches, and they boasting all about, you know, like they head up like they all that. This is it. See, all those things are passed away. You hear that? All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hastens by. See, all those things are gone like a shadow. See a shadow on the wall, boom, you move, it's gone. That's how all the riches that they have is going to just vanish away. As salvation is coming to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why it behooves everyone to look at the Most High's laws and follow them. And as a ship that passes over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found. You don't know a ship, ship go by, go into the water, go by, go back to the water, the water go back to just where it was. You don't know a ship went by. That's how it's gonna be for them. And all you that take on this prideful type of character in your everyday living, thinking you all that, you ain't nothing as you ought to be. You don't have nothing. What you got to be prideful about? You ain't made it to the kingdom. So what you got to be prideful about? 
but boast on the most high. Praise the most high instead of yourself. They praise you, you better say praise the most high. All praise to the most high. You better learn to say it. Remember Moses? Hmm. I remind you over and over again, maybe it'll sink in one day. The most high through my shot told him, speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. I'm bring forth my water. My shaka shaka shaka, he gonna bring forth his water. To give we the children of Israel some water, right? Israel got on Moses' nerve, as he said. And he hit the rock twice. Moses still bought his water for him. But he told him, he said, hey Moses, and this is where we fit in. In this day and time, he took Moses up on a high mountain. And he showed them the lands he was going to give to the 12 tribes of Israel. Showed it to them. And told them, you go over there and die. Because you didn't give me the glory. You didn't exalt me. You ain't boast on me. You ain't brag about me bringing forth my water out of that rock. So you go over there and die. And the Moses I said, he, didn't, he told them when they talked about uh, Moses, man, the area was talking about Moses. Like the most I was dealing with them like he dealing with Moses. So I deal with Moses mouth to mouth. Not in no dreams or dark visions or anything of that nature. Moses was his boy. Moses was tight with the most high. And the Mashiach was shot. The Mashiach was shot is the angel of the most high. At the time. That led us in the cloud by day, in the wilderness, and fiery chariot. By night. So he that angel of the most high. See, Moses is not like other men. But he still told him, hey man, you give me the credit for bringing forth my water. So why you look at it, exalt yourself if you want to. At this time. We don't want to be one of them that we've taken up and the most I show us the kingdom. He show us the kingdom, the last time that we ever have to see captivity, slavery, or bondage, or oppression, or the oppressor. And he show it to you and say, but you can't come. Because you didn't give me the praise. But you allow people to praise you and you ain't never say praise the most high. All praise to the Most High. You, you never say that to me. But hear what I'm saying. In the spirit. Look. This is what they're saying. This is just the, the way of the wicked. The pridefulness of the wicked. Verse 10. With Solomon, the 5th chapter. And as a ship that passes over the waves of the water, which where it, where it is gone by, when it's gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the kill in the waves. You don't know that that ship went by. Water goes back to just where it was. That's what he's saying. That's how they're going to be. And it continues to go forward. So you see how Ezra was bringing forth in the spirit how really in essence the most high dealt with Darius, King Darius and Cyrus brought it forth from what King Darius has said concerning building the house of the Most High for we the Israelites because he ruled in the kingdom of men. Look at uh, First Ezra. I'm going to give you a, to show you how a lot of times things can be 
in elevation of yourself, but you got to look at our people more so than just yourself, because you're just an individual. We're just individuals. But I'm going to show you a case scenario of even what we just read about concerning Cyrus preparing everyone to get ready to go to Jerusalem and build the house of the Most High. Look at uh, First Ezra, the fourth chapter. There was a, uh, let's look at 2nd uh, Ezra, no, 1st Ezra, it's like it, the 3rd chapter, and First Ezra 3 and this is a like a challenge to see which one was wisest. So let's look at, and you can read the whole thing, but it's almost get around. So we'll get right to the point. It said, First Ezra three and four. It says, then three young men that were of the guard that kept the king's body spake one to another. Let every one of us speak a sentence. He that shall overcome. And whose sentence shall seem wiser than the others, unto him shall the king Darius give great gifts and great things in token of victory, as to be clothed in purple, to drink in gold, and to sleep unto gold, and a chariot with bridles of gold and an head tire of fine linen and a chain about his neck. These are the things that's going to happen for those of the three men that were the wisest. Whatever they come up to say. And he shall sit next to Darius because of his wisdom and shall be called Darius, his cousin. And then every one wrote his sentence, sealed it, and laid it under King Darius, his pillow. So they sealed their statement, and they laid it under King Darius' pillow, as he was sleeping, and said that when the king is risen, some will give him the writings and of whose side the king and the three princes of Persia shall judge that his sentence is the wisest to him shall a victory be given as was appointed so this is what they wrote the first wrote wine is the strongest the second wrote the kings is strongest the king is strongest. The third wrote, women are strongest, but above all things, truth bear away the victory. Right? So what's that? I'm not supposed to continue to read on. Truth bear the victory. So, as you can see, the first one said, wine is the strongest. The second one said, the king is the strongest. And the third one said, women is the strongest. He said, but above all, between the wine, the king, and women, the truth is the strongest. Those are the three statements that was made. This one we have to...
to get another sword to my sword is worn out. But it's still the best sword that I have. So it says, once again, the first row, verse 10, wine is the strongest. The second row, verse 11, the king is the strongest. Verse 12, the third row, women are strongest. But above all things, truth bear away the victory. Now when the king was risen up, they took their writings and delivered them unto him, and so he read them. And I'm, I'm dealing with all this because of what we just went over in Ezra. And what Darius had proclaimed that we would go to build a temple to the Most High. Or Cyrus. So lucky. Now when the king was risen, well, they took the writings and delivered them unto him, and so he read them. And sending forth, he called all the princes of Persia and Media, Media, and the governors and the captains and the lieutenants and the chief officers, and sat him down in the royal seat of judgment. The writings were read before him, them. And he said, Call the young men. They shall declare their own sentences. So they were called and came in. And he said unto them, Declare unto us your mind concerning the writings. Then began the first, who had spoken of the strength of wine. And he said thus, O ye men, how exceeding strong is wine. It caused all men to err at drinking. How strong is wine. You drink that wine, it caused men to err. It maketh the mind of the king and of the fatherless child to be all one. Of the bondman and of the free man. Of the poor man and of the rich. It turned also every thought into jollity and mirth, and happiness, laughter, and so forth. So that a man remembered neither sorrow nor death. So you don't remember your sorrows or your death, who you owe. And it maketh every heart rich, so that a man remembered neither king nor governor. And it maketh to speak all things by talents. A lot of people, they speak a whole lot when they get to drink it. It says, and when they are in their cups, they forget their love, both to friends and brethren, and a little after, draw our swords. So they can make you get angry too. Forget about all the love you have for your friends and family, that's you know, drawing our swords, ready to fight, ready to throw down. But when they are from the wine, when they're not drinking, they remember not what they have done. They lost their mind. And did certain things, you know, people, especially alcoholics, they get drunk, they do things, say things, and operate in a way that's wicked as ever. Then whenever they get sober, you know, they be the nicest people in the world. Oh man, I didn't know I did that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Or they'll say, you know I got a problem. Like you supposed to just accept the fact that they wicked as hell whenever they start drinking. That's what he's saying. They remember not what they have done. And ye men, is not wine the strongest that enforces to do this? And when he has so spoken, he held his peace. He said, isn't wine the strongest that enforces men to do this? Act this way, when he has said this, he shut down. Didn't say anything else. Chapter 4. Then the second that has spoken of the strength of the king began to say, O ye men, do not men excel in strength that bear rule over sea and land and all things in them? But yet the king is more mighty, for he is lord of the power of all these things and hath dominion over them. And whatsoever he commanded them, they do. Whatever he command them to do, they do. If he bid them make war, one against the other, they do it. If he send them out 
against the enemies. They go and break down mountains, walls, and towers. They slay and are slain. They kill and they also are killed. And transgress not the king's commandment. If they get the victory, they bring all to the king, as well as spoil as all things else, like the miracle, filled with gold, oil, and diamonds, whatever they can get. That's their God. It's real. Likewise, in Dallas too, it says, likewise, for those that are no soldiers and have not to do with wars, but use husband tree, that's farming. When they have reaped again that which they have sown, they bring it to the king and compel one another to pay tribute unto the king. You gotta pay taxes on them. And yet he is but one man. If he command to kill, they kill. If he command to spare, they spare. If he command to smite, they smite. If he command, command to make desolate, they make desolate. If he command to build, they build. If he command to cut down, they cut down. If he command to plant, they plant. So all his people and his armies obey him. Furthermore, he lieth down, he eateth and drinketh, and taketh his rest. And these keep watch round about him. Got, got the ones that's security all around them. Neither may any one depart. They can't leave from around them. And do his own business. Can't leave to do your own, but you got something that you can't do. You gotta watch the king. Neither disobey they him in anything. O ye men, how should not the king be mightiest? And in such sort he is obeyed. And he held his tongue. He said that he got quiet. So now, pay attention. Then the third. Verse 13, then the third, who has spoken of women and of the truth. This is Zerubbabel, began to speak. Look how much time you're going to spend on this. <laughs> o ye men, is it not the great king? No, the multitude, excuse me. O ye, great, o ye men, it is not the great king, nor the multitude of men, neither is it wine that excel. Who is it then that ruleth them? Or hath the lordship over them? Are they not women? Wow. Women have borne the king and all the people that bear rule by sea and land. Even of them came they, and they nourished them up that planted the vineyards to make the wine. From whence the wine cometh. Talking about women. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. And without women cannot men be. Yeah. And if men have gathered together gold and silver or any other goodly thing, do they not love a woman which is comely, beautiful, in favor and beauty? So they got all this gold and silver. Do they not like a woman that is beautiful and favorable? And letting all those things go, do they not gape? And even with open mouth, fix their eyes fast on her? And have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver or gold or any goodly thing whatsoever? So they care more about her than their money. That's what he's saying. man leaving his own father that brought him up in his own country and cleaved him to his wife. He sticked not to spend his life with his wife and remember neither father nor mother nor country. So he don't remember anything. He forgot about his father, his mother, or country. He sticked to his wife. It says, by this also he must know that women have dominion over you. Do you not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Yeah, a man take up his sword 
and go off his way to rob and to steal, to sail upon the sea and upon the rivers, and look upon the lion, and go up in the darkness. And when he has stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love, to his woman. Wherefore a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. Yeah, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. So many cats ran out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. Slaves for their sakes. I mean, men is in jail behind women. It says, many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. Many also have perished, got put to death behind their woman, have erred, erred in the truth, erred in the regular world, and sinned, broken the laws of the Most High for women. Oh, I can't do it no more, man. I got to be with my woman. And now do ye not believe me? Is not the king great in his power? Do not all regions fear to touch him? He said the king is great in his power in all kingdoms. Every, every last one of the regions that he is in control of, they, they fear the king. Yet did I see him in a pomade of king's concubine, the daughter of the admiral Bartokus sitting at the right hand of the king. Sitting at the right hand of the king. And taking the crown from the king's head. Taking the crown off the king's head. And setting it upon her own head. She also struck the king with her left hand. Took his crown off, took his crown off his head, and struck him, struck him, struck him with his left with her left hand. Bam! Struck the king with her left hand. And yet for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. Oh, he did that. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. But if she took any displeasure at him, <coughs> excuse me, the king was fain, the king was fain to flatter that she might be reconciled to him again. And she ain't laughed. He looked at her like, come on, just smiling at her, trying to get her to be happy with him. Again. Oh, ye men, how can it be but women should be strong, saying they do thus? So how is it that women can't be strong, seeing that they can do this? Then the king and the princess looked one upon another. So he began to speak of the truth.